the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. So a sacrament like we will celebrate in baptism and in the Eucharist is an outward and spiritual sign of an inward and spiritual grace, an outward and visible sign of an inward and spiritual grace. And for me, water has always been an incredible sacrament. Uh, water has had a profound connection in my life, uh, an emotional connection. I don't know whether it's the uh, being the, the son of a naval officer or uh, being the son of a <coughs> mother uh, whose family spent generations on Lake Champlain, uh, but water has always imbued something in me um, that connects me to something beyond myself. Um, whether it's going up to Lake Champlain and every year I know I'm home, uh, and as a, a Navy brat who traveled so much, I, a home in a way that I don't know many other places once my body has been uh, enveloped by the lake, once I've jumped in, uh, and it's not just uh, the comfort of being in that beautiful lake, but it's the memories, the family story, uh, the way of going home, almost like returning to the womb all around you, uh, connected uh, with who you are. Uh, it's, it's, it's a profound feeling that I get every time I get up there uh, and take that first plunge and realize as I feel that cold water all around me, uh, how much I'm surrounded by my story. Uh, and um, also, uh, as I uh, travel to the ocean, I've always lived on the coast, you know, that incredible feeling when you're at the ocean and you take a look out and you see the vastness and the power uh, and the majesty and the, just the enormity of the ocean. And then you go in uh, and you realize uh, your own fragility in the, um, the, and of course as a kid I thought there, I was in, indestructible as I uh, surfed through the waves, uh, but you realize how much surrender is involved in, uh, in letting yourself go as the uh, waves uh, take you uh, crashing back to shore. Uh, and there is something about that that just connects you to a power beyond yourself. Uh, and it goes beyond that. Somehow I always felt uh, a little bit more beyond myself um, when there was water involved, whether it was a body of water, whether it was water from on high. I remember uh, the most alive experiences that I can recall uh, were on the, the soccer pitch uh, when it started pouring down rain and you're covered in mud, and the rain is pouring down, and somehow there's an intensity and electricity running through you uh, that just felt so alive. I imagine now on the other side as a parent uh, that my parents on the sidelines uh, thinking about the laundry uh, uh, that they're going to have to do later in the uh, 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 frigid cold probably didn't have that same alive experience that I did. Uh, but there was something about that that just felt a little bit more full uh, than, than other otherwise. And I, I imagine my mom also started to worry about me when I was in high school, and I would have this, um, this countercultural reaction to a pouring rainstorm. As everybody else would seek cover, uh, I would journey outside, uh, and I'd go walking across the street from uh, where we lived, was the Lafayette River, uh, and I would love to go when it was pouring down rain uh, and just stand or sit by the, uh, the river and watch the way the rain would crash in, uh, and then uh, uh, the water would, would, would respond uh, and bounce up. Uh, and just watching the, the, the rain pounding against the water against water and feeling almost enveloped, uh, al almost surrounded by something beyond myself, uh, it truly did have a, a profound effect. Um, and, and I think water does uh, bind us to, uh, to something beyond ourselves. Uh, I also remember, this was, I think, March of 2003, and I remember it was March because we were watching March Madness. I was, uh, had a Sunday off. Uh, from seminary, and we're down in Sandbridge uh, with all my in-laws, and we're watching March Madness, and uh, during one of those news breaks, they announced that we had uh, invaded Iraq. Uh, it was the second uh, uh, Gulf War, uh, and then I remember walking uh, that evening, having a great evening with family, um, and, and I, I walked, I remember I had a solo cup, and I, I walked down uh, to the beach, and I realized I was miles and miles away from uh, from what was happening across the world, but as I stared at the ocean, uh, and as I put my toes uh, in the water, I realized that just across that incredible expanse of water, uh, lives were being changed forever. Young men and women were, uh, uh, were, were, were defending, uh, uh, defending the United States. Uh, people on the other sides of those, um, uh, of those shores uh, 
were, were losing family members, that there was a, uh, a violence that seemed almost video game-esque on television. Uh, but as I put my toes in the water and realized that just at the other side of that water, Navy ships uh, were, 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 were along the coastline uh, and lives were being changed forever, all of a sudden uh, that connection that seemed miles and miles and miles and miles away all of a sudden grew more intimate, more connected. Uh, and I realized that I was bound to them. Uh, and I think sometimes it even happens here, not, not very far downstream. Uh, we are getting acutely aware of the fact that uh, what we do uh, in our lives as it, as it pours down the Rappahannock, uh, ends up in the bay and then out into the ocean, and our effects here uh, uh, are connected to a series of, uh, of ecosystems down, down the river from us uh, that we can't escape that connection. And I think it's more than just geography. I think water reminds us that we are intricately connected to the world. That we are intricately connected to people beyond ourselves. I think we don't have to look much farther uh, than the events of the last two weeks. Uh, and as we do this, uh, read this gospel reading, it's kind of hard uh, to read about the power that God has over the, uh, uh, the, the winds and the, and the rains and the waters uh, and not be struck with the conflict that we deal with as we look at what happened uh, with, with, with Hurricane Harvey uh, and, and with Irma. Uh, but worlds that seemed infinitely apart, even in the same city. Neighborhoods uh, that people didn't enter into, uh, communities that were separated, uh, all of a sudden were bound together by water. People of different ethnicity, people of different socioeconomic classes, people that uh, would have probably have not seen each other uh, as closely as they did, all of a sudden found their lives engaged uh, and the commonality, uh, the humanity uh, that they shared uh, somehow became closer together. The awareness of the brotherhood and sisterhood of all became a little bit more intertwined as the water entered the neighborhood and God was in the midst of it as fully as God uh, intervened in the story in the gospel, that God was present. I was struck by that. Uh, I, it was my first year uh, uh, as the head of the church um, in Louisville and I remember it was the day after Christmas and it was... Um, it was incredible to show up at church, and then by the time I got out of church, I had turned on the news and realized the effects that the tsunami uh, had had in the Indian Ocean. Um, and as I was pondering that uh, and praying for, for all of the lives that had been affected, uh, I remember reading the reading for the upcoming Sunday, uh, the baptism of Jesus. And I remember asking myself, why would Jesus be baptized? Jesus, who's without sin, uh, in a baptism uh, that's meant to basically wash us clean. Why was Jesus entering into those waters? And I realized uh, that there is something profound about God entering into the waters that wash over the whole world. That Jesus entered fully into the human condition, fully into our lives, so that we know in disasters like the tsunami and the hurricanes, in the waters that roll and, 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 and ebb in our lives, that God is present. That God is acutely present in the midst of all of it. That every time the rain comes down, we know that God is there and has been there and has walked there. I was struck even more by that um, as I was, uh, it was probably about a year before uh, my daughter's baptism, but it came to me as I was getting ready to baptize my daughter, uh, and uh, we had gone and visited my uh, sister-in-law up in Cleveland, and we were on a river cruise along the Cuyahoga, uh, and they were talking about how it was so polluted that it caught, caught fire that the waters had become so polluted that they caught fire. Uh, and I went back to that baptism. Uh, and it was reaffirmed when I went to uh, uh, Jerusalem uh, in, the, in the Holy Land last year uh, that Jesus entered into probably the most toxic water uh, he could have entered into. Everybody who got into that water were trying to wash their sins clean. Uh, John the Baptist was, uh, was, was baptizing people from all the shame, all the disappointments, all the betrayals, all of the brokenness of humanity, and all of it was, was floating uh, like oil above the surface of that water that Jesus entered. Um, and just like the, uh, the fires that, uh, that, that, that actually, the waters that actually caught fire, uh, the Jordan was filled with all the muck of humanity, and Jesus enters right into the midst of it. Jesus gets right into that water, taking on all of the human condition so that we know that God is always amidst our lives, whether it's the ripples or the torrents or whether it's the pollution 
or the shame or the disappointment or all the things that, um, that we have in our lives, all of the waters that wash over us, God is in the midst of them. As I mentioned, my trip to Jerusalem, what struck me even more than any of the architectural sites, even more than the uh, uh, Bethlehem and the birthplace of Jesus or the, uh, 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 the, the place where, where Jesus may have, have, have died uh, and, and the empty tomb, uh, what struck me more than any of those uh, churches that uh, signified those spots were the bodies of water. When you walk by the Sea of Galilee and you realize that's where Jesus first called those disciples and said, come follow me. And all of a sudden, uh, these fishermen found a purpose and a sense of God calling them to something special, something transformative in their lives. Uh, you see uh, Jesus uh, calling these people and giving them uh, a sense that God had something uh, beyond what, what, what life had thrown at them in, in, in mind. Uh, when you see all of the things that took place, Jesus walking on water, uh, Jesus telling them to throw the nets to the other side and catching the copious amounts of fish, uh, all of those wonderful stories, that healing story, the resurrection story of, uh, of Jesus and Peter, all of it taking place. And you put your feet into those waters and you realize that God is in the midst of all of it, that God entered that fully into humanity. It's transforming. Or when you wade up to your knees in the murky and unspecial waters of the River Jordan, and you realize that God didn't go to the most magnificent uh, pond or lake or river, uh, that Jesus entered into the common River Jordan, uh, just like God enters into all of our lives, you realize the profundity of all of that. And the pools of Siloam, where Jesus uh, told the blind man to go and wash not only uh, away his blindness, but away his shame and disappointment uh, and, 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 and isolation, uh, and renewed for, for, for new hope, for new promise, all of a sudden you realize the power of water to reconcile and to wash clean, uh, and it really struck a chord uh, within me. And today we're going to enter into uh, another beautiful moment where water will transform lives. In baptism, we enter into that moment where Jesus enters into the water. And when he comes out of the water and the skies open up and Jesus, uh, uh, Jesus is there and God's voice descends and he says, this is my child, my beloved, with whom I am well pleased. God comes into our world twofold. God comes and takes on the fullness of the human condition. God becomes fully human. But God also comes from above and says, I take on all of it. And I love you. All of your imperfections, all of the pollution in that water, all of the things that you've, uh, you've done wrong or you will do wrong, I take on all of that and I love you. You are my beloved with whom I am well pleased. And when we enter into those waters, we also stand in solidarity with one another. We're about to make promises that we will seek and serve Christ in one another. We're about to make promises that we will respect the dignity of every human being to make promises that we will love our neighbor as ourselves. And I ask you to do so with those memories, those images seared into your mind, those images of, uh, of people crossing boundaries and helping one another in Houston, Texas, of crossing boundaries in Florida, of all the times that you've seen water bind us together, that when we make those baptismal promises, we bind our lives to one another and to God who infinitely, and in so many ways, bound his life to us. Amen.